voice. And I like your guitar, too. Ew, you girls totally have a crush on Josh. Raven, you need a touch. Raven, you need a touch. Just look a million years older than you guys. All right, you guys, that's enough. Thank you very much, ladies. But I think it's time for... I know. What? What? I think it's time for a scary story. So you guys can handle this? Can you guys handle a spooky story? Yeah, but I don't know if Petey Peters has any clean sidey whiny black. Petey Peters pants, Petey Peters pants. Remember when Josh told us that story about the Book of the Dead? Come on, guys, leave Peter alone. It's no more s'mores than early lights out if you don't knock it off. But Petey started it by peeing his pants. <laughs> okay, that's it. Everyone start packing up the s'mores. No, no, please. We really want to hear your scary story, Josh. Yeah, yeah, we promise we'll be good. Yeah, we promise, Joshua. <laughs> But any funny business. This is a true story that happened right here at this very camp back in 1958. The year the camp first opened. It is said that the devil's spirit lives right here at Camp Wanawa in what we call the devil tree. Terrible things have happened around it over the centuries. Human sacrifices, cult gatherings, witchcraft, hangings, you name it. It happened right over there. It is said that if you touch it, the spirit of the devil will possess you and drive you to kill yourself. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> On a night similar to this one, a couple kids from camp were fooling around near the devil tree. They were teasing and taunting a young boy named Devin to go and touch it. They said that if he went and did it, they would give him all the candy from their care packages. But if he didn't do it, he would have to walk through the dining hall during breakfast. Naked. Devin <laughs> 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 was tired of being made fun of and so desperately wanted to be liked. So he accepted the dare. He began to make his way up the hill towards the tree, quickly at first. But as he got within steps of the tree, his pace slowed. He began to feel a fiery heat radiating around him. He inched closer and closer to the tree, and when he was close enough to touch it, he turned to look back at the boys below. He could see looks of astonishment and their mouths wide open in disbelief. One of them even cried out to him to come back. But with a smile on his face, and still looking at the boys, Devin reached out his right hand and touch the tree. He began to make his way back down when he started to hear whispers all around him. Diabolos niño! Diabolos niño! <laughs> he looked around frozen in fear but couldn't find any source for the sound. Now the boys watched as he made his way back down but something was different. Something seemed wrong with Devin. They watched as he seemingly glided down the hill. He continued straight on through the group, unresponsive to their calls. He held a blank, steady stare that seemed to carry him, and before they knew it, he was right over there at the edge of the cliff, overlooking the creek below, and without stopping, without missing a beat, Devin took a step without any ground beneath him, and silently fell to his death. The boy screamed! They ran to the edge of the cliff and saw his misshapen, mangled body down in the red-stained creek below. They raced back to camp, screaming for help. Minutes later, they came back to the camp counselor to look for Devin, but... he was nowhere to be found. And suddenly, with the sound of a cracking branch from up on the hill, Devin... The boys turned their heads to see a dark figure swaying in the devil tree. They slowly raised their flashlights to reveal the figure. It was Devin! Hanging from the tree! <laughs> <laughs> and with that, it lights out. Come on. That's not the version I heard. I heard that when the campers came back, Devin was dancing on top of the tree. When there were bombs oozing out of his ears, and he was howling at the full moon above. Oh! He was naked. That's not Ashton's story that I heard. Josh, your story was.
like basically perfect, just a couple things at the end. Not really a big deal, but um, I, <laughs> and when they went back to the camp to look for Devin's body, it was nowhere to be found. Police came and searched the campgrounds the next day, but could find no evidence that Devin was ever even there. Later that week at camp, a group of boys went to teasing Devin found dead in their bunk bed. The cause of their death was never confirmed. To this day, Devin's body has never been found. They say his soul never left the camp. They say it rolled in these woods, searching for the soul. No, 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 no. <laughs> Those are all wrong. This is how the story acts. <laughs> <laughs> Devin made his way up to the tree, and when he reached out to touch it, he peed his head! Go, go, go! You're always making fun of me, I can't take it anymore! They never understood me, and you never cared! I just wanted you to like me. I just wanted another chance. I had to do it. I had to do it. You'll never understand the darkness and cold I feel. Always searching. Always alone. I had to do it. 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 To do it. And now, it's your turn!